I really like the idea of having the UI and HUD in the game be interactable, something that's both functional and fun to use. This devlog, I'm going to go into depth on how I'm planning to do this, and what I've already done. If you're new around here, I'm developing a roguelike called Sundercore, and if you're familiar with these games, you'll know the direction I'm going in. The first thing I want to discuss is how I improved the map UI over previous iterations. The level generation has been completely overhauled recently, and while doing that, I decided it would be a good idea to implement new map UI too. This way, I could accurately see changes in the level generation while I was tweaking it. Nice. The previous minimap was stiff and unfinished. There wasn't a lot of space to display important information like landmarks and items and rooms, and the overall structure of how it was coded made it difficult to add additional exceptions for specific room types. And additionally, it restricted how big I could make the levels and how many rooms there could be. In the level generation, adding more rooms was a whole process of adding exceptions to all other previous room exit objects. This was not sustainable. The new system is so much more flexible, and because of this, levels are bigger, a lot bigger. I've even added support for 2x2 two two room sizes. This is just a test room, so don't worry about how it looks right now. Also, these 2x2 two two rooms will be significantly bigger when I start actually making room layouts. You probably noticed I've added the ability to pull up an expanded version of the map. I really like how this turned out and the animation I made for the expansion. This view lets you see more of the map and even lets you drag it around. The main map can be opened by selecting the minimap with the cursor or pressing a button on the keyboard or controller. You might be wondering what these letters and numbers are beneath the map. This is actually the seed being used to generate the level. This way anyone playing the game can input a specific seed and play the exact same level layout as their friends or YouTuber or streamer that they watch. The seed would dictate things like the level generation, the room layouts, and the items in shops and chests. Although, because of the sheer amount of randomness and roguelike, I plan on the seed being similar to something like Minecraft seed system. So in other words, there will still be random events that happen that aren't directly influenced by the seed value. This will be things like drops after rooms and stuff like that. Stuff like this will most likely be tied to a, a look stat. Each UI widget can be expanded or hidden. I did this so players can have more control over how they want to customize their UI layout. When the player's ability or gun UI widget are hidden, it still indicates whether they're usable or not. Although I don't have the player ability implemented yet, you can see it with the gun widget when I need to reload. The bar dims and then brightens back up when you have ammo. The left hand side of the player hood is dedicated to the equipment and player stats. Here we can see the player's health, their ability, their gun ammo and their inventory values. The health bar displays your current HP and max HP. Your armor and max armor are indicated by these shield symbols above the health bar. Armor is a consumable item that negates all damage received from your next hit. This means if you get hit by an attack that does 1 damage or 100 damage, one piece of armor is used, and no damage will be inflicted upon the player's health. This makes them a very valuable resource, and because of this, I have capped the amount of armor the player can hold at one time. Most characters only hold one piece of armor. Sergeant Griggs can hold two pieces of armor. Passive items and upgrades can increase your max armor capacity. I made this choice to not let the players become too tanky, and to balance the value of an armor piece. The health widget can also be expanded, and as I said earlier, I want the UI to be highly functional. So this expanded view will actually show the stats of the player. The gun widget can also be expanded to show the stats of the gun. I've seen this as an option in other roguelikes, and I thought it would be an interesting thing to include in my UI. So this would show things like player's movement speed, jetpack speed, or their gun damage, bullet velocity, and range. The ability widget shows how much the ability is charged, and whether or not it's ready to use. I'm yet to implement the ability, so I can't speak too much about what this screen is, but I will say, it's going to be the menu that you're going to use to upgrade and view upgrades for your ability. The inventory widget shows the amount of credits, upgrade points, keys and bombs you currently have. I'll go more in depth on this in a separate video. This widget can be expanded into a full view of the player's inventory, however I haven't actually implemented the inventory yet. Something I felt it was necessary to add early in development was a pause menu. To do this, I tied everything in the game to do with movement and animation to a game speed variable. So in other words, I can set this value to 0 and it will pause everything in the game, and set it to 1 to unpause everything. Because of how I implemented this, I can set the game speed value to anything I want, meaning I can make slow motion effects that affect everything in the game, or maybe just some things. I see a lot of potential for cool passive items to be made with this. The pause screen menu has several options. Return to home base is going to be used to surrender the current run and return to the hub area. There's also an option to straight up quit the game and exit a desktop. Most of the work that's been done has been in the options menu. I've fully implemented the audio settings so the player can adjust music and sound effect volumes. The video settings are yet to be implemented, but I have some ideas for possible options. The gameplay settings are mostly implemented. I have various options for editing the UI and even moving the minimap. You can also change the screen shake amount and the controller aim assist amount, although I don't actually have controller support yet. Because of how I programmed the UI, it was very easy to add color profiles into the game. I have this UI color profile option, 
that allows players to switch between different colors to use for all the UI and HUD elements. There's seven to choose from right now, and I plan on adding more in the future. Doing something as simple as changing the UI color can really make the game feel different. The UI color even changes small things like the jetpack cooldown bar. In case you haven't figured it out by now, I really like players being able to customize their experience. I plan on having local co-op in the game, so I went ahead and added support for co-op UI. This basically just flips the UI and moves around some of the text positions. It might look like it was just as easy as flipping a value to do this, but in reality, it actually took a lot of time to program the UI to be flexible enough to flip to the other side of the screen. I plan on having multiple types of co-op modes with different kinds of gameplay and even a versus mode, but that's for future development and future devlogs. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.